Okay, in this lecture I'm going to review some of the concepts we've learned uh, by looking at a Lewis dot diagram from the start and uh, really deriving all the different pieces that we can from the Lewis dot diagram uh, up until today. So let's start with a compound and let's start with HCP. Okay, and let's start with valence electrons. Okay, and let's do start with the dot diagram. So hydrogen has one valence and we'll have uh, carbon having four. Okay, uh, two, three, four. And then we have phosphorus with one, two, three, four, and five. We can clearly see that hydrogen is happy and stable with its two valence. Carbon, if you look at its shared electrons and lone pair, is six. Phosphorus have six. So all we can do, as we've been talking about, is oops, is add a. Um, all we can do is add bonds here. So take this away, uh, add a bond here. Okay, and then we're going to take away a nut. This bond. Well, we're going to take away a red. I should say. And then um, we'll put that here. Uh, that wasn't red. Stinks to be colorblind. I think that's red. So put that red here. And we count two, four, six, seven for the carbon. And phosphorus has seven. So as you probably can guess, okay, we're going to add another bond. Okay, and match them all up. It's really the only thing you can do. If it's not working out, add a bond. Okay. And there we go. And that's probably a red, not a black. There we go. So we're supposed to have um, three reds and three blacks. And I'm trying to color coordinate this. And it really is painful. Okay. So carbon has its four black dots. Phosphorus has its black dots. And what we get, okay, let's just skip the color coordination and go right to it. We have a carbon. Okay, let's not go that thick. So we have a carbon in the middle who is triple bonded to the P who's got a lone pair and then it's single bonded or that way to the hydrogen so if I draw this another way I have triple bond to the P lone pair and a single bond with the H and I really can't come up with another way to do this okay because that H is limited all right. The question is, what does this look like? What's this all about? Well, first of all, because there's no lone pairs above the carbon, above and below, they're all located in two directions. This is clearly sp hybridization. Okay, that's the first thing. After I do my Lewis dot diagram, okay, if you want to clean it up, you can. It doesn't matter. All of these three things, all these three Lewis dot diagrams are equivalent. I can see there's no lone pairs. I can see that there is only two regions including the triple bond so two regions of energy electrons is the s and p came together an s and a p mixed to make two equal orbitals but what we should remind ourselves is that there are two p's that are unhybridized unhybridized why well there's three p's two, one p went with the s and mixed together but two left unhybridized which gives us the possibility of two pi bonds and lo and behold look at that we should all know at this point in time one of these bonds okay one of these bonds is a sigma bond and the other two have to be pi okay because of the molecular geometry so let's get to it let's draw it to make sure we understand now um, carbon is in the middle and uh, I guess I have it there but I'm not gonna put it there I know it's SP hybridized alright so it there's gonna be two equal lobes here's one SP orbital here's another these are two different orbitals that can hold two each don't fall in love with the fact this is a P orbital alright now the P on the end is terminal and I don't think I need to explain its bonding so I 
uh, in terms of hybridization because only bonding in one direction. So I'm going to draw it unhybridized. Okay, uh, atoms that are at the end don't need hybridization. Hybridization is for central atoms to bond in the shapes that we exist. So let's do P, and let's do its unhybridized P. There's the PX. Let's do the PY. Okay, PY. And let's do the PZ. All right, and this is the PZ. I guess it's P. Diddy's father, maybe. Who knows? Okay. Uh, any case, I'm going to draw on a circle here. And that's my S orbital, unhybridized. And I'm going to put the electrons in. So I know this is the S, and there are two electrons. One, two, three. Let's do four and five. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. Well, I can't do the same thing. I have a hydrogen over here. Hydrogen, okay, is just going to be an S orbital. And look at the direct overlap. That hits a valence electron. And I'm going to now do the carbon's electron. It has four. So there's one that completes one sigma bond. And there's two that completes the other sigma bond. So that's where these bonds come in, right there. And the first one, right there. We need two more bonds, OK? And you can clearly see if it's sp hybridized, we have two more unhybrid orbitals, two more p's. Okay, think with me if you're not if you're a little bit lost. Carbon has a configuration on its valence shell to be two s two, two p two. So when it got hybridized, what happened was one of these electrons from the s went to the p. And we get this scenario, electron in four orbitals. Okay, but that's the wrong scenario since this is sp hybridized. Sp hybridized means, well, we only took the s and the p to make the two orbitals we have here. We left behind two orbitals with the regular unhybridized p's that are still in the structure and they contribute to the pi bonding. Let's put them in. We have the P Y and we have the P Z. Okay, poorly drawn, but you get the idea. Now we have two valence electrons. We need two more. Let's put one in the PY, one in the PZ here. And the reason why I did that is to give us that pi bonding. We have top and bottom. That's one pi bond. So that's our second bond, or the third, doesn't matter. And we have the front and we have the back. And that's the second pi bond. And that explains the geometry. Okay, you notice it's still linear because. It is made up of uh, just, if you notice, two regions in the same place. So we only have basic electrons, even though it's triple bond here, don't get confused. This is just one region where electrons are. These electrons in the pi bond, as you can see, because they stretch over an area, do not bend anything down into other shapes. So double bonds, triple bonds, they're part of the same region, okay, to determine hybridization. So. What else do we have here? Well, we have it's linear, okay, so it's a linear shape. The bonds are 180 degrees. The, uh, also, the bond are polar. Okay, why are they polar? Well, if we revisit the shape here, we have H bonded to a C, triple bonded to a P with a lone pair. Okay, well, there's a difference in electronegativity between these. Uh, phosphorus and C have different electronegativities, and I believe uh, phosphorus uh, is the same or equal to carbon. I can't remember how close, but I'm going to guess that C is a little more electronegative, so this would be the negative side. 
and this would be the partial positive side, and we write a dipole moment from always positive to negative through this bond, and we know that this is a partial positive on this side, partial negative, carbon is more electronegative here, and we'd have another arrow. You may say, Mr. Grotsky, wow, this should cancel. Uh-uh-uh. Okay, the difference in electronegativity, okay, is greater in one of these two bonds. And, to be and I'm going to have to look this up, so I'm going to look to see what this might be. So let's pull up table F. Okay, so after looking at my electronegativity tables, uh, at least the current ones, I found that phosphorus has electron electronegativity of 2.2. Hydrogen, believe it or not, is also 2.2. Uh, carbon is 2.6. Now, this is uncanny in terms of these are really not the same. These are rounded values. And you can always use the rule of two different um, uh, elements will have two different electronegativities. So you can say that, well, these two ponds are essentially the same. Wouldn't they just cancel each other out? And if you are using the rule that, hey, they're both 2.2 to 2.6, and the difference in electronegativity between C and P are both 0.4 and between H and C, 0.4, you can make a case that these two polar bonds would, in fact, cancel out and be a nonpolar molecule. Okay? So these are polar bonds because they have a difference in electronegativity. Notice it's small. That's why you're sharing, but, okay, you could also make the case that, that these are, are different by a little bit. They can't possibly have the same electronegativity, and you could say, okay, it's some, maybe a little bit polar. So this is a, this is a, I picked an oddball one. So there's a case to say, there's a lot of nonpolarity in this molecule, but I could accept that it's polar molecule because it is asymmetrical, it is this different all the way around, and these would have some differences, however small. Okay, the real truth is this is a pretty nonpolar molecule, but according to our rules, it's a polar molecule. Bad example that I can clearly see. But again, um, there's no resonance here, okay, because H doesn't have any ability to pi bond over here, continue the flow of delocalized electrons. This is not a polyatomic ion. No electrons were needed. And formal charge wise, we didn't really need to use formal charge to answer this because essentially there was only one structure. But if you want to look at formal charges, okay, just as some practice, uh, and back to this, H, two electrons here, carbon, Add the three electrons here and the three electrons for phosphorus and a lone pair, we can see that hydrogen has one valence, minus one it's using, zero. We can see carbon, half its bonding, which will be four, there's no lone pair, so four is the valence, minus how many it's using, which is four, also zero. And of course, phosphorus has five valence, and it's using five. Okay, lone pairs plus half of its bonding, and there you go. So hope that helped. Sorry for this little confusion. I should think about the molecule first. Uh, we ran into a scenario where on the table they both have the similar electronegativity, but I would accept both answers based on the appropriate responses. I hope this helped.